Yes, indeed, absolutely. And going to the character, the character, the main character that uh, just sort of just starts off focusing on her name is uh, uh, Blair, and she's uh, she's like she's like uh, in her I think in her um, mid twenties or maybe early twenties, and she and she's had a rough uh, past, and she decides to uh, to run away from it, and she enters this town called the Wolf Den, which which you can do, which, which of course is a reference to First Blood Part Two, where uh, he where of course Rambo's on the the radio after after he saves the prisoners the prisoners and he says Wolf 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 Ten over. So it has a reference to that, and she enters this town where where she's uh, she, she's trying she's trying to uh, start start a new life and stuff like that, and she meets up with these people. Uh, this one guy, uh, Max, he he runs the motel that she stays at, and. And, and he sees something different about her because he's a psychic. He has a psychic abilities and um, and is exposed later that he's uh, an obsessed Rambo fan who created this uh, like this community of a uh, Rambo fan club, fans of Rambo. And they are uh, and they're so, and of course they're excited about uh, Rambo's return, but they're also um, they despise the fact that a young generation, not just a young generation, but but uh, there's a, uh, some people who are against Rambo, and they they don't they definitely despise those type of people. And they rant about how uh, the stuff going on in Hollywood and in America, and how and how it, it ain't what it used to be. How how Rambo was how was was put on the back burner, like then then uh, then these other action heroes. He was put on the back burner. How he how he kind of led the way for those type of action heroes, but he was like put on the back burner like Superman was. How he, how he was uh, the alpha, but he was put on the back burner, so mm-hmm. people don't don't talk about him or forget about him, or they've forgotten about him. So it deals with that, and and of course those those people that the the the, the members of this Rambo fan club they see, they call those people who are against Rambo or anything that's old school. Anybody who hates anything old school, uh, they refer to them as Murdochs. <laughs> I love that. And that's Murdoch because, because uh, you know, the character of Murdoch in Rambo First Blood Part Two, he's he's like the head honcho. He wants he wants to run every everything, uh, yeah. wants to control everything, but but um, who wants things? Who wanted who wanted things his own way, but didn't get it. So it feels so so. So it's like it's like it's like, it's, it's like a story about going up against the system, you know? Yeah. Because Mur- all the Murdochs in the world wants to control everything, you know. They want to they want to leave leave things to die, leave things to bury, something old school to die, like Rambo. Like you know, that's how it is. That's how it is in Hollywood right now because mm-hmm. Hollywood has no respect for anything old school because they want to remake old movies and they want like, like of course like this recent story. No news I heard about Fox remaking Escape from New York and all that crap. And, yeah. And and how uh, act, old school action movies uh, like like Rambo uh, are are, dis- are being disrespected and not and not by by a younger audience and stuff like that. So it really deals with those issues, those real life issues going on today, not just in Hollywood but but around the world, especially in America, about like I mentioned before about ageism and uh, generational issues. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. There's a lot of old school versus new school. There's a lot of like old world practical filmmaking as opposed to nowadays CGI, candy coat everything. You know, taking the easy way out and and paying less and going the route of CG. Um, you know, I I I, I had a, a theory for a, a scene a week ago or when I was on vacation about. Mm-hmm. About the kids actually, you know, this is this is very much also a story of you know why can't both sides get along? You know, you, like exactly all through the movie, you got the kids saying, "Oh, you know, you guys suck because you're stuck in the '80s," and we got the older people saying, "No, this, this is how it was done." They use the term uh, nostalgic. They use yeah. the term nostalgic. They call them nostalgic. Well, you people are too nostalgic. Why don't you? Why don't you get a move on? But something I can relate to, too, and I know you can, um, and, and a lot of other people, especially all those kids who went to see Meet the Spartans, um, oh, yeah. 
It would be nice to have um, a scene at the end when Blair's walking out of town. And we kind of get a glimpse of these kids being like, Fuck, man, did you see that Rambo movie? That was fucking crazy. The 50 fuck caliber ripped guys fucking throw it out. You know? <laughs> it would be cool to play on a note like that. You know, a nice ending note like that. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, yeah, there was a, there was a scene where... Uh, I was thinking about a scene like that where I mentioned how... Because that's, that's what creates the whole... Uh, I'm not going to give it away. That creates this whole climax through the whole movie uh, uh, after the Rambo, after Rambo Four opens, and how they affect the characters, and how the failure of the movie would be as far as it kind of affected affected those characters, and but and it creates this crazy tension, and it leads to this crazy climax mm -hmm. through the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't, I won't let the cat out of the bag, but uh. It's it's great A man. It's a good script. We've been spending a lot of time on it, and it's changing constantly. And it's 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 just getting it's getting to that plateau, you know. Oh, absolutely. It's on. It's it's, on, it's, it's moving up. Yeah. Moving up, baby. And and while I'm while I'm at it, I'll actually I'll, I'll mention the other movie we're working on, Blood. Mm -hmm. Where to begin with this one? Um, we're doing a fan film. Anyone can be a part of it. Anyone who wants to get involved. Um, whatever talent you have will be very much appreciated. Uh, we're doing a by the fans, for the fans. Um, official, unofficial, I, I don't know what to call it. Rambo prequel. And... It's going to be me and Isaiah teaming up with um, Michael Chapman out of the UK. You might have seen him in um, Hooligan Factory. And he has another great movie coming out. Oh, freak. What the hell is it called? It was on the tip of my tongue. I just lost it. Um, I guess I'll edit that part out. Um, yeah, Hooligan Factory. And he's been in, like, countless, 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 countless wicked, wicked stuff. He's got at least, I think, 50 or 60 IMDb uh, profile moves. Anyway, so we're hooking up with, so this could be myself, Isaiah, Michael Chapman out of the UK, and we're teaming up with She Died Productions, Mickey Cardoni and Jonas von Zeschwitz, and, and Tasso. And um, I believe Mr. Stephen Chang will be with us also on location, reprising his role as VC Commander uh, Tay. And he'll be reprising his role in voice over format, and Tasso will be playing his younger self. Tasso will be playing Stephen's younger self. And then... Steven will also be playing a brand new character of the commander's father or relative. We haven't decided if it's going to be uh, father, grandfather, or relative. Definitely somewhere in the relative area. Um, and pretty much we're going to try to fuse together as many of the paradoxes from that era that we've never seen. So, for example, um, what can I use as an example? Oh, perfect example. If you go back and read David Merle's fabulous First Blood, 1972, Rambo's captured because he gets shot in the leg, like around the knee somewhere. He gets shot. Uh, I don't believe they have the hole in that scene, but he does get shot in that scene. That's how he gets taken down and uh, put into in prison for six months. Um... We elaborated on that, and we, we went back, and, and we did a little nod to Morel's, um, Morel's original take on Rambo, because we want to be as honest as we can. And we went back, and uh, if you've seen Rambo Mania way back when Stephen Chang came on for Enter the Grandmaster, um, the title on YouTube's different. It's uh, featuring Stephen Chang, or Stephen Chang, one of ten, or whatever. Um... Stephen came on with his notes from deleted scenes from First Blood that we've never seen. 20-minute introduction 
dealing with Rambo's capture. The only thing that's different is they make all these traps and Rambo falls in the hole. You know, they dig up all these holes all around the place, Rambo falls in the hole. What we're going to do is we're going to have Steven uh, with a sniper rifle, and he's going to blow the shit out of Rambo's leg. And Rambo's going to fall in the hole. And that's how he ends up in the hole, you know? So little paradoxes like that, we're going to play on it. So we're going to use, like, David Morrell's theory of Rambo gets shot. We're going to use Steven's theory of Rambo falls in the hole. And we're going to include our own paradox of mixing those two together with, you know, Steven actually being the one that takes Rambo out. Yeah. <laughs> another one. Another one. I'll, I'll give you one more. Uh, two more, actually. I'll give you two more. One nod to Rambo 3 is after this happens, Rambo's in the hole, Rambo blacks out. Rambo wakes up, Rambo has no more weapons. But his leg is bleeding, and his knee is lodged, and his leg is stuck out, so he can't move his leg. So what does he do? We get a brief need uh, nod, sorry, to Rambo 3, in the sense that Rambo perform, performs, I know where you're going with this. performs surgery on himself in the hole by sticking his thumb in his knee, but he can't get his thumb in there, so he has to, like, wear out the hole with his fingers, get his thumb in there, and pull out the bullet so he can move his leg. And uh, the, last, the last little nod I'll give you is, we even wanted to bring in some of our own paradoxes, some of our own things to add, because... You know, eventually, the people going into it are going to think, okay, well, you know, that's how Rambo gets all his scars, right? That we see him with in first blood. But, uh... I got plenty of ideas for that. Oh, yeah. But we decide to add our own scar. And then one that's really cool, where in the book, in David Morrell's book, they throw down a live snake, and Rambo rips off the head and eats the snake. And Rambo's pretty delirious, and for, for days, he doesn't even think if... The snake was venomous. He just ate the snake raw, you know? So we thought it'd be really great if some of that venom infected his lip, and that's how, uh, that's how we get, you know, Sly's famous, you know, corner of the mouth. Uh, I don't know what you call that. What do you call, what we call it? Paralyzation on his lip? So that's, uh... <laughs> yeah. So that that's how that's that happens. Touch. That's a good touch. That's a good touch right there because if you if you go back and look at Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the you know, Harrison Ford got that scar because because he was in a car accident and ha and they put that in with in the story how in in the end with Indy in the Last Crusade when he was younger with River Phoenix how he was uh, in that train and he was up against this lion and he used the, the whip. his first his first whip. And while he whipped it, hit, 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 the, the whip hit his, uh, his, his chin. His, his yeah. Chin. I was actually and watching that the other day. Start. Yeah. I, I think, so far there's 96 scenes and every single one of them relates to some other time in Rambo's life. I won't tell you how, but uh, there's a lot of clues if you go back and watch the show over the last month. We've been uh, leaking out a lot of clues. Mickey Cardoni is the perfect, this guy is Rambo. Just the way he focuses. Nice. I've I've known Mickey for a long time. The way he like, he's so focused and he does the mannerisms, everything like Sly. It's more than you know. It's like a state of mind with him. He's like so good at what he does. And they he's put like a younger. He's like he's like a younger version of Sly. Like if Sly drunk uh, drink a uh, 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 was in the Fountain of Youth, uh, would drink a potion that a fountain could feature a Fountain of Youth. Mickey would look like him. Yeah, yeah, and Mickey. Ah, man, like, the, the audition, the trailer audition they did for the Rambo prequel, when, when the idea of it was in fruition, when Stallone put out the original idea back in 2009, I believe, or 2010, maybe, I think 2009, um, they, did, they just did this wicked trailer that held no punches, really tightly edited, um, just really, really beautiful trailer. They went up against all the elements,